Hey, Brian Wilson, Texas Lawhawk, say Funky Town Podcast. Funky Town Podcast! What? Funky Town Podcast! Funky Town Podcast! Funky Town Podcast? Funky Town Podcast! Born in the east, raised in the Midwest, something my grandpappy told me before and I moved west. He said, All the world's a junkie, we're merely the syringe. And all the world's a bottle, we're a drunkard on a binge. And now western streets are paved with hundred dollar bills. So keep your head on straight, boy, in them California hills. I got mudslides in my bowels and earthquakes in my thighs A water shortage in my bladder and blackouts in my eyes I'm a casting couch potato, I got tofu for my brains I've had so much plastic surgery, my face melts in the rain Then I don't know what to do when the traffic lights turn green This porno's full of lead, this drinking water is obscene Lend all my friends to cokeheads, and me, I'm strung on pills But I wouldn't change a thing about the California hills I'm going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home to them California hills. I got helicopter pilots tangled in my hair. My sugar mama lives in Malibu. She is a millionaire. We're tooling down the drug strip, tricked out beyond belief. In our topless titty cars, we're in nothing underneath. And the air is unbreathable, there's tumors in the sky. You better shoot me while I'm happy, you better kill me before I die. Cause my girlfriend's a junkie, and me, I'm strung on pills. But I wouldn't change a thing about the California hills. Lord, I'm going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home to them California hills. Well, there's hair farmers in Hollywood, fake hippies in the hate. Cholo's down in Chinatown drinking cans of paint. And the sun is a blonde, the moon is a brunette. My karma splattered my dog all over the cement. And my roommate's smoking crack. Me, I'm strung on pills, but I wouldn't change a thing about the California hills. Lord, I'm going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home to them California hills. When it gets down to 65 degrees The roaches are atrocious And there's traffic in the trees The streets are full of lunatics Drooling from their chins Obnoxious drunks and crazy assholes Yeah, baby, we fit right in So let's kick back, relax Smoke a joint and drink a beer Sometimes I wish I was myself Yeah, I wish that I was here Cause in 20 years now I'll be getting my bigger break The ground is the limit The sky is opaque and all my friends are cokeheads and uh, me, I'm strong on pills But I wouldn't change a thing about the California hills My girlfriend's a junkie, we're both strong on heroin But I wouldn't change a thing about the California sun And I mean, I'm strong on pills, but I wouldn't change a thing about the California hills. My girlfriend's a junkie, we're both strung on heroin, but I wouldn't change a thing about that California sun. 
Lord, I'm going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home, going home, going, going home, going home, home to live in California hills. I'm going, going home, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, I'm going home to live in California hills. My clothes are all the way too small, and I have forgotten how to drive, cause I live in California, and it's great to be a drunk. All right. Welcome to Funky Town Podcast. That was Nathan Payne's California Hills, and he's our guest today, along with Denver Williams, and Joe and Zach are both here. Hey. Hey, guys. So, uh, yeah, uh, Denver put together a show at the Pig Summoning Wizard House, which I didn't even know was a thing, and uh, I was like, all right, we're going to go to this pig. I didn't know if we were pig summoning wizards, or if there were, like, wizards that were summoning pig i don't know it's like a, a house that wizards live at where they summon pigs maybe so or, i wasn't sure what to expect when i got there mm-hmm. you know and or is it a pig summoning wizards <laughs> i call it the duck pond plantation <laughs> <laughs> that's a much more accurate <laughs> <laughs> description well, now i left my house telling myself i should take a if I, I like to fish i should take a fish pill and I didn't because I'm like, I'm not going to fish. I'm going, I didn't even know there was water there. I just figured maybe on the way I'll see some water. I'll leave early. I can maybe fish 30 minutes an hour before I go. And then I ran out of time. I was like, I should take a fishing pole anyways. And then I didn't. Then I pull up and there's this big duck pond. And I'm like, is there fish in there? They're like, yeah, there's fish in there. I'm like, just listen to your inner self. Yeah. (laughs) But um, yeah, I wasn't really sure what to, you know, exactly what it was that we were doing. So we all hung hung out for an hour or so. um, Just kind of fellowship and hanging out and talking then we go inside and and sit down and then we do some pig summoning wizard stuff and <laughs> out of the door underneath the texas flag walks out nathan payne and he opens up the show with that song california hills <laughs> and the next hour was great it was awesome yeah, you know it was it, fun it was really yeah, cool it was a good a great audience like, yeah. it was one of those kind of things where it's just like it, you know it's that it's that listening room where every single person there came to see you you know, I'd only been, I, I'd known about you for like a week or so. I started yeah. watching some of the videos. And when this video ca- came on, like with, yeah. with the Easter Bunny yeah. and all that stuff, yeah, yeah. it was like, this is really cool. Yeah. It matches the lyrics. It's real kind of yeah, surreal yeah. And, and almost absurd. You it know? is. It's funny. Yeah. My buddy put it. It was his vision. Yeah. yeah it was good. Yeah. I like the way that it starts off. He walks into a phone booth and he puts a quarter in and puts the phone handle down and then he starts singing into the phone i think that's cool yeah yeah you know or it was one of the cuts and then you other cuts. I, he did everything he just kind of yeah. used me for a day mm-hmm. we and we stood there with a boom box on the sidewalk off camera and i would you know i was singing but i wasn't even tracking the audio right and with the boom box slid it matched the recording and you know various locations and then he did all the rabbit stuff and all the all everything else on and, and his own time and his own dime uh-huh and apparently, I don't remember this, and I've never looked it up, but that old man at the beginning was in Requiem for a Dream wow. oh. in some act capacity. I don't, uh, you know, one of the old men in, in one of the creepy scenes, you know, pick one. But yeah, he was, it was, uh, apparently, I've never looked it up, but he was like Hollywood, you know, you, you knew the guy. Yeah. And so he did the, you know, the scene where, you know, the, the old, the grandpa, which is cool, but, uh. And then my 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 friend is actually in it. The uh, junkie chick uh-huh. is an old friend of mine. He's still a friend of mine, and uh, so th- and then so he contacted her separately and then did the rabbit scenes with her, which was cool. Yeah, because she's actually my friend. So uh, that's yeah. cool to have your friends in music videos. Yeah, yeah. So we watch. We're, we're watching one of the first, or I guess it's the first me motor scooter video the other day where Denver's oh. the main character. Oh yeah, that, that one was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was us figuring out how to make a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's quite different from the last two, for sure. Yeah, but it's still a fun we video. Figured out to find professional so friends. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly. trade favors. I yeah. movie is on. You can use a yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so you're sitting at home doing your thing, and then you get an email from this 
dude in Texas named yeah. Denver Williams. Yeah. Saying, hey, do you want to come to this house and play a show? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah? Yeah, we, uh, he, you know, he just emailed me, reached out, and um, I had to, you know, kind of, I haven't been pursuing shows lately, and, um, you know, and he just, well, we, you know, like, you know, we, I called him, or he called me, or whatever it was, or both, and we called each other back, and, we, you know, we, we talked for like three hours on the phone, and. I'm like yeah, this will be fun. I'll, I would like to do this, you know, and uh, this is like worthwhile, you know. Not that I'm all, it, it, but it was just, I'm. It, it was looked like sounded like fun. Yeah, you know, um, something I don't feel different. Like evangelizing mm-hmm. uh, the music to an empty bar full of people waiting for the karaoke guy to set up anymore. So it was like, well, this is going to be a little more, you know, personal and uh, interested and everything. And and I'm like, well, that'd be that'd be fun, you know. And uh, and it was, and it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, because I'm actually going to Mexico in a few days, and I was just going to fly straight to Mexico, and um, uh, I was looking for shows down there, and I found two. I was looking for like eight, mm-hmm. found two, then I realized I'm cool with just two, because uh, I'm going to spend time, you know, doing whatever uh, it becomes clear that I'm supposed to do when I get there. Okay. Whether that's teach English or, uh, you know, walk to you know belize or i don't know we'll i'll we'll, we'll, i'll let you know yeah yeah and, but now we get to you know it was fun it was a privilege actually and then you know have an honor to have a really uh, audience that was attentive mm-hmm. kind of a trip actually yeah so now because being like a like joe being like in a band and stuff it's like you just go and play gigs or whatever but mm-hmm. like uh, all the singer songwriters that always go to these bars and play for three. I don't think you've ever had like the experience where you play. No, for three hours at no, a bar. I have not. And I can't imagine, you know. But yeah, there's people that do it. I mean, Denver does it. You do yeah. it. I think all the time. We we'll go where you go, set up at a pizza shop or a bar, just play for three hours. You know, do you just throw some covers and do some of your stuff? Or we were we were talking about that a little bit on the way up here and uh, watching Nathan take a room and own it. I I, I don't know if you I'm sure you agree, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm totally. not going to speak for you. Like totally come in and take an acoustic guitar and bring the energy for an hour and uh, keep transforming like so i was like when i was talking about how bored i've getting in with my solo stuff how i've been wanting to step it up anyway but playing for three hours at a restaurant uh but last night for me was another you know put a possibility out there like oh wow like i want to do i want to have something like that again have something where uh you know, I don't feel I, don't, I love playing acoustic, and I have sometimes there's great shows, but uh, you know, I want to transform a room and I want to uh, interact with the room. Um, I think I'm answering or yeah. on topic, you know. Uh, no, the great thing about watching you play the the, the acoustic, I'm because I mean, I, I think all the stuff that I'm playing here is all your band stuff or whatever, but it's, it's, all, a diff- it's all well, I I play everything on most of the recordings, okay, except unless there's any kind of real drumming going on because I don't have any drum skills at all. Uh, tambourine, right, uh, right, conga, something like that. But and I can't harmonica, play the drums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all the other instruments I play on the multi-track. You know, um, but yeah. But just doing you and and the guitar, it can feel empty to a lot of people if you don't know. what They're you're afraid doing. you have to sell yourself to the bar um, sometimes, and you know, a lot of times what happens is the band will cancel on you the day of the show, um, and you're doing a four-hour show, and it's not an artistic environment. It's a dive bar in some, you know backwater town that you know, I, you know it's not, i booked the show i mean i'm down with it i'm mm-hmm. going but i thought i was going to have a band for four hours and now i'm standing here with my girlfriend on the tambourine and i got to entertain these people who want me to play eagles covers for four hours sure <laughs> and you don't always succeed mm-hmm. you know but you it does step up your game so you know you it's like you're getting dragged behind a pickup truck for ten thousand miles and you and it hardens your it, you, and it's just like so i you know i i firmly believe that a, a bad show is better than a good practice because you can it toughens your skills and then you can, and I've been playing solo enough and trying to enter, entertain the room and engage them with punk bands playing after me. Mm-hmm. Uh, room, you know, I got a full band that I have to compete with sonically, and I don't want to. I can't stand there and emote into my shoes uh, in a full in a room full of people who are just you know, yeah, you know, having fun on a Friday night. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's art, but it's entertainment also, and right. it's not schlocky. But you want to keep their attention. So to do that, uh, anyway, that's it's. Uh, I would love a band. I, I, you know, I'd love like you know 
a, 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 just a just a, ba- a rhythm section would be mm-hmm. would be ideal, you know. But uh, I've had them, I've had you know many of them. Uh, I would like to anyway, but yeah, t- to do it uh, alone is often necessary. So you, the drum, the guitar becomes your drum. Right, you play it's like your rhythm section, real kind of fast. Yeah, and it's kind of like you know. And so when I got to Chile in Santiago, they were scared because I booked this I booked this tour following Nick Cave around. I was trying to get Nick Cave's attention. And I called it the Poor Man's Nick Cave Tour. And instead of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, I was booking Nathan Payne and the Sad Beads mm-hmm. and using it as a promotional <laughs> tool to kind of try to get my name on the map and get out of the oblivion and the, you know, and then behind out from behind the rocks and in, in the shadows and stuff and and I <clears throat> originally intended to bring a full band, which would have cost a fortune. It wasn't cheap anyway. You know, I crowdfunded it and, and got exactly what I needed and not a penny more. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I couldn't bring anybody along. And um, so, but I booked a band at all these bars in South America. So I got to Santiago and they're all very polite and friendly, but they were like, you could tell they were nervous that I was going to be, a, they were like, oh, you don't have a band? You're playing by yourself with an acoustic guitar tonight on our bar on a Saturday night, and this is going to be how are we going to? And uh, and then by the end of the show, they were like, "You don't need a band," and and they and they were all, and that's my goal. That's mm-hmm. what I want. I need to do that. I need to win them over. I have one hour to do it. Usually, you've got one minute to do it. Sure, and you've got to, you know, you got one song, you know, and you got to keep them going. And actually, that that uh, that whole show was. Well, the recording was worthwhile to keep. The I'd like to remix it and stuff, and kind of make it better production-wise. But the live in Santiago album is on YouTube, or on Bandcamp, and you can hear a lot of subconscious efforts to keep the audience engaged. Because I don't know, I can't. It was actually a pretty nice room. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't huge, but it was a good stage, and I couldn't necessarily see too far out. And I'm like, you know, it wasn't packed. It was, but there was people there. People were there, and I'm like, well, I want them to stick around. So, I'm playing, go through my set, and I got my live standards. And this song is maybe a slower song in a country gallop, or it's in three, and it's not this upbeat song. And 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 after I play the songs, you'll notice on the recording that there's a lot of fast strumming. You know, like, and I'm like, it's just, and I'm not aware I'm doing it. I listen to it later. I'm like, well, I'm afraid that the audience is losing them so I want them to I want to wake them up you know okay this song is called play something real you know, just strum just off kind of a C ears. chord for some reason for me but then just strum off a C chord real quick just to give the air energy so that it keeps looking at me so that the bar is happy that it hired me and you know because we all know what it's like when the bar is not happy mm-hmm. that it hired you and mm-hmm. and uh i want the bar to make money you know i i'm i'm a, it's a business and i would like them because if they make money i make money and hopefully <laughs> depends right, on the right. <laughs> that's how it's supposed to work <laughs> yeah. but yeah I, at least on paper you know the bar is doing well therefore they want us back cuz you know when the b- drummer and the bass player cancel the day of the show and you got a 4 hour set you mm-hmm. know four different sets four 1 hour sets at a bar in you know downtown Palookaville, uh, you're not going to get hired back. You know, you have to show up, and you got to show up and do as best you can with what you got, and that's your job, and that's what you've been hired to do. And they pay you, but when they when you say, "Can we do another gig?" They're like, "Eh," and you get it. I don't even argue. It's like you have to ask because you want to play there again. But they say no, and you're like, "I get it." You know, mm-hmm. I blew a show in L.A. like that uh, accidentally. I just lost. I lost control of my right arm for about a week was kind of weird and i couldn't have any strumming power huh. for weird for reasons that i don't understand but i it was something weird and i i was my arm was unreliable at the time and it wasn't in pain but i couldn't control it it sounds but it's like a floppy fish and my buddy in san diego uh who plays banjo came up and filled in for me he filled and but i had to do the whole three hour set with just a drummer and a guy who i've never who's a gold friend of mine but he had never rehearsed before i said mm-hmm. most of the songs are in c if you're if you're lost, play a C and you'll be right about fifty percent of the time. <laughs> and we're going to try to pull off this three hour show, and we didn't. And it was a <laughs> freaking nightmare. And the bar was disappointed that it hired me. And I've asked them a couple times since for a show, and they've never responded. And I don't blame them, you know. So so you go through that enough, and we've all been there. Uh, sure. But you know, you just keep going, and then you you start to you start to try. You make an subconscious effort to engage whatever it is that's going on because you're fighting the football game you're fighting the TV you're fighting the karaoke guy you're fighting all of it so you want to win yeah these days you're fighting the phones attention too. and mm-hmm. affection if possible of whoever's in the room so that you can come back and 
hopefully. And so build your fan base. <laughs> so you did. Um, so you did live in California for yeah. a while. Yeah, not one word of that song is actually true anymore. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. It's uh, yeah. I used to love it there. No, I, I lived in L.A. from um, well, actually, right before nine eleven until about oh six, mm-hmm. the middle of oh six, and uh, and that video was made in oh four. Um, yeah, but I yeah I li- I moved out there for a little while and. Uh, I don't know. It's great. It, it's like it seems to me like you have a California style. Yeah, I li- I immediately liked L.A. Yeah, when I first went out there in '99, and I was there for like a month and a half, and ended, or about five weeks, and I was still drinking at the time, and got into some stupid situation, and and you know, it kicked my ass. L.A. will kick your ass. It's a hard town, actually. I mean, nowhere is really soft, but L.A. is particularly indifferent. It's brutal and it's indifferent, and uh, it kicked my ass, and I ended up in the hospital, and over I OD'd, collapsed in the street, and it was weird uh long story but uh i got the bug i got the bug and i said i'm going back to that town i like that place that was a trip and i went back like two years later with some money after working a summer job and i got a job at the chateau marmont right away uh which is this famous hollywood hotel on you know i was living at this flop house and working at this place where the cheapest room was 400 dollars a night and you know john waters was staying there and i delivered a a uh, piece of dry cleaning, or picked it up actually. I'm sorry, picked it up from Bjork. <laughs> Bjork was, they're like, "Hey Nathan, we need you to go pick up uh, dry cleaning from room 37." I'm like, "All right." And I opened room 37, and Bjork is standing there in a bath t- bathrobe with wet hair. I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> oh my, and she had these crazy powers flying out of her eyes, and I sure. instantly fell in love with her. And I went back to the. I said, anything Room 37 needs, even if I'm not working, call me, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I delivered an envelope to Joe Strummer's room, like a, a year, about a year before he died. I worked, it was, he didn't die. He was dead. He died in 02, and they, I had to deliver a room, uh, an envelope to him. So it said Joe Strummer on it. It was that kind of hotel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't meet him. He wasn't there, unfortunately. Right. But, I, but I had the master key, and I let myself in and put the envelope in a professional manner on his totally, like, trashed kind of room. To his, you know, he, you know well, you know, he just, he, it wasn't like party trashed. He just kind of, he didn't care. He was just, you know, food, you know, room service plates and kind of junk as well, kind of everywhere. And I put, you know, Joe Strummer and I put it on the table. So that was my first job in LA. And, um, but then they laid a bunch of us off. Anyway, I, I did live there and I liked it for yeah. a long time. Uh, and then I just got tired of it. You know, I just burned through it and the muse left and the sparkle left and I solved the puzzle. And it was time to find another one. Time to move on. Yeah. Um, now, when I say this, I'm not trying to make myself sound like an intellectual or anything like that. But like you remind me, um, or at least your spirit kind of reminds me of Kerouac. Oh, yeah. Because he's very much, he's roaming around all over the place. Yeah, and yeah. These different, a, you know. Yeah, and, huge and it's, influence, actually. It, it's mostly on the road. You I mean, I haven't right. read all of this right. stuff. but yeah. But not all that, of it. Most of it. Yeah. Primarily on the road. Yeah. But, but several. I've it's been a while. Yeah. But he was just going town to town, meeting girls, falling in love. Yeah. There was lots of tragedy, but there was beauty in it. He right. always found beauty in it. And I think that's what I like about your, your music. A lot of it seems kind of tragic, but there's always beauty in it. Even that, that song, you're like, I love the California Hills, even though you're talking about all these yeah. bad things. That's a nice thing you know? to hear. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually an amazing thing to hear. That's, uh, I think, without even knowing it, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. It should, should be beautiful. There should, there should, it, there should be... It's like some stuff's going to be super depressing, but there should be something funny in it too, mm-hmm. or there should be beauty in it, even if you if it's kind of morbid. It shouldn't be, you know. There should be something because that sadness isn't, that sorrow isn't. You don't want to get nihilistic about it. I mean, you don't. Without the beauty, you're going to blow your brains out. Sure. <laughs> right, right. You got to see the beauty in and it. You got to, yeah. There is, and you know, and I love Kerouac. Actually, I'm a huge. I, I I still love Kerouac. I do too. Yeah, yeah. He's a, I'm a fan. I'm a big, but, he's a big influence. But it seemed like he lived a very sad life, you know, in a way. Yeah, that, he was. Yeah, yeah he, I think he was torn. Yeah, he didn't seem like he, you know, even when he made it, he was still. He didn't. He, you know, um, he never quit drinking. Right. Uh, and, but he was an excessive drinker. It's not like he just had a few beers. And, no, he was and a he, drunk. He, he was yeah. a drunk, right? And toward the end, he was uh, notorious for getting into. Fights, not even necessarily fist fights. I'm probably sure it came to that to a degree, but he was a yeah, I think probably a shit talker, <laughs> and you know he was in this kind of working class bar in Jacksonville, Florida. I think he somewhere. died in Florida. I think it was somewhere in Florida. I want to say Jacksonville. I'm not sure. And he, you know, he was successful already. Or, or, or when he's on the, um, 
Oh, it was not Dick Cavett. It was another big guy at the time. I do remember him being on a show. You can see it on YouTube. And he's kind of drunk. Was it with Ginsburg or <laughs> yeah, somebody? Yeah, no, um, maybe. No, I don't think, maybe. Uh, it, Jeff, was, it was some guy, I don't remember. Gosh dang, what was the name of that show? I want to say. What's that English? He sounds English, but he's from New York. Not it. it <laughs> he's like that intellectual guy who had a show. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah. But he's obviously kind of... Um, uh, Sneaking a drunken ass of himself on TV. Yeah. You know, and so he never quite, see, and he, you know, he's on his third wife, you know, lived with his mom mm -hmm. and his third wife. But he was very troubled. And I don't is, know. It's uh, kind whatever. Of, it's, I mean, it's, Steve uh, Allen. Steve Allen. Was it the Steve Allen show? Maybe. I want to say. Or William it. Buckley. William Buckley. Oh, okay. That's it. That was it. And he's on there with like a hippie guy, and he, because, and he didn't quite. And he was just kind of a drunk. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. You could tell he was drunk the, to, a, to a fault. Not just... But anyway. Yeah, yeah, but his spirit... What I love about him was that his spirit always seemed to shine through that. And That's never, kind of what's going on. He never yeah. really believed in it. Even, it was like he couldn't find anything else to do. And so he just kind of stayed in that unrealized alcoholic situation instead of, you know... Um, if you can drink, you can drink. And there's nothing wrong with having a drink. But if you're a drunk, it's kind of a problem, right? So it's like... And he never found anything else to do, it seems. And so, uh, but his spirit never entirely, his body failed him, I think, before his spirit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of the King David story as far as like, you know, where David was always failing God. But, there you go. But God, you know, but God said he's a man after my own heart. He kind of recognized yeah, the right. spirit of that. There you go. That's you know? interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I always like those kind of, it's just, and it's just because of my wishful you know, I mean, I'm married. I got kids. I yeah. love it. I wouldn't trade it for, for, for anything. No, yeah. But I still have that wild yeah. kind of mind and that in that roaming heart where it's yeah. like, oh, I wish I the could. The funny just part, and I've noticed, is that it really is always greener on the other side, man. It really is. Like the mm. grass is always greener in someone else's bong, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and and so you know, you're like, um, because what you know, I was just talking to these people at Denver's house and or uh, at Neil's house actually, um, uh, like Blaze Foley. You know, if you and you read about him, and it's like he, he was his wife was, at the time called him. He has a homeless homebody. Uh huh. He's kind of a wandering heart, but he really kind of wanted to be home. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I feel like that. I, can, you know, I, yeah. I have to. I would love to have a place to, you know, put a cat and a mm -hmm. and a garbage bag. You know, and yeah. to stop living out of a bag. I'm not. I've chosen it. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Right. Lest I, God forbid, I sound like I'm complaining about it. I mean, I'm. Mm -hmm. It's got a massive upside. That I that I wouldn't trade, um, but they're, they're, it's like anything. Mm -hmm. It's like anything. Nothing is perfect, right? So it's a little bit of both, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I always I always say choose your compromise. I mean, I started living in cars uh, because I had a job, and I was a telemarketer, and and I was taking the bus uh, on down Sunset Boulevard, before, and then it's L.A., so you'll meet people, and then I befriended the sister of this famous baseball player. I'm not. I don't really know baseball, but. Uh, uh, she, they got rich because he was a Cy Young Award winning pitcher and so they got, sort of moved into the hills and I saw her randomly in a bar and we're hanging out and she's like do you want my old car? I'm like hell yeah <laughs> I want your old car right so it's yeah, like yeah. a 93 Taurus nothing fancy she had like a nice car because mm -hmm. her brother was rich right. so she gave me her old car and uh, I was looking at it one day parked on the street and I'm like you know everything I own will fit in the trunk of that thing <laughs> why am I waking up at 7 o'clock every day to go sell magazines to people in South Carolina who you hate me when I can move into that, and I actually so I did, and I got more done. It was an adventure for at first, mm -hmm. and it and and I, it was inspiring, and I got more done for years. You know, more promotion. I never been able to stick. Well, that's the downside is that you. It's like okay, you you feel if you if you're staying in a place, you feel stuck. The up the downside is that if you're not staying in a place, you can't stick to anything. Right. So it's like, well, what's I don't know. What are we doing here? Then we all hopefully I don't know. So. Uh, I got a lot done though. More writing, more promotion. Um, so it played more, a lot of shows. But my compromise, instead of waking up at six o'clock or seven o'clock every day to go take the bus, one job I had it was like a two plus hour commute from Silver Lake all the way out to deep like Sylpulvida and uh, Sherman Way, I think was the street, which is like a two hour bus ride at least one way. So I'm like you know uh, commuting four hours a day. Uh, it's exhausting. Yeah, you know, and and uh, so my compromise then was well, I don't get to take a shower every day. I'm sleeping in a car. I'm brushing my teeth in the park. 
you know, I'm drinking room temperature instant coffee and every day, room temperature meaning the, the passenger seat. And, and uh, that's my compromise. And uh, so I've chosen it, so own it, don't bitch about it. Now, is it hard to meet people and make relationships living that kind of life? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, the little bit like girlfriends or even just some like, chicks maybe like lonely it. or some chicks that want to try it out. Yeah. They think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, some chicks, uh, depending on the, the type, you know, usually artistic types or, you know, maybe artistic types who are stripping on the side for cash. Right. You know, they'll let you, they'll, they downright take care of you. you know, they'll come mm-hmm. up, they'll. Or you'll, or it's a, it's that you know you, it, uh, God provides, man. It's mm-hmm. kind of amazing. I found one hundred and four dollars in cash on the street in downtown L.A. on the sidewalk one day, you know, just because I was hanging out with a friend and I needed that money really badly. Or one other time, I was living in my car, didn't have a dime to my name, and uh, I mean, I had like a dime. I had like, <laughs> I had like fifty cents, no green money, and an eighth the tank of gas. And I'm like, you know what? I can sit here in fear and, and evaporate into death, or I can just drive and tell the wheels fall off of this life. Forget it. I'm forget it. F it. I'm I'm taking a ride, and I'm driving around in this neighborhood in L.A. like a residential neighborhood, not like a big street. And some dude is flagging me down for a for a ride. He's, he's like hitchhiking in a residential neighborhood in L.A. And I, I'm like, you know what? I actually need to give this guy a ride. So I'm like, I roll down my window. I'm like, hey, man, you got any cash? He's like, yeah, I'll give you 20 bucks. Just where you need to go. And there you go. All of a sudden, I was like, I had like, you know, 80 cents and, and an eighth of tank of gas. And all of a sudden, I got 20 bucks. All I have to do is give this guy a ride. We had a good conversation. He was cool. Mm-hmm. He was grateful for the ride. And I had enough for like some gas, like a half a tank of gas and a you know, jumbo jack and, you know, and a, you know some fries or something. And, and I was good for the day. Yeah. Or another time. Well, my second wife and I were living in a car in San Francisco, playing for living in the bu- busking for a situation. Um, well, that's a long story, but it's interesting. This guy, uh, we didn't make any money, and we were walked out of the subway. It was a rough, rough situation, and um, uh, we had like ten bucks, and it, it was a hard ten bucks. And this homeless guy comes up to me, and he's like, uh, "Hey, man, can I have five dollars?" And I was instantly, honestly, convicted by the Bible verse that says, Give to he who asks and him who wants to borrow from you do not turn away. But I'm like, that's half my cash, and I just cut my guts out for it. No, dude, I can't. But I was like, man, you know what? That's not cool, man. That's not what God wants me to do. So after we went to Union Square and sat there, and I'm like, okay, God, I'm sorry I didn't give that guy half my money. But it's cool. Within 10 seconds, another guy, Angel, of course, dressed in homeless camouflage, comes up to me, looks right at me, and, we're not li- and he's like, hey, can I have $5? And I said, you know what? He said, you got $5 for me? I said, I don't, but God wants you to have it, so it's yours. So we're walking uh, out, out of, the- and I'm like, well, good. Well, we got five bucks now. We can't even afford the dollar store peanut butter anymore, but at least we were obedient to God's will, and we're going to be okay. We're walking back up to the car in the hills in Chinatown. Out of the blue, some couple is walking down the hill, and they say, hey, are you hungry? We don't feel like carrying this around anymore. Here, you can have our leftover China food, Chinese food. And, dude, it was like fish. It was like $20 worth of food. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have, If I was in the restaurant, I wouldn't have bought it because it was the expensive stuff. I would have bought, like, the vegetable tempura and maybe an egg roll, you know? Right. And this is like, and it was more than enough food for both of us. We were full, and it was quality, man. And it's like, so that kind of stuff will happen. Another time, uh, same trip, where uh, the guy, we had $2, two, and we, like, you know, bought a bagel from Safeway near Ocean Beach in San Francisco, and we're walking out, and this guy asked me for some money. And I said, you know what, man? Because I, I sympathize with homeless people. And I said, you know what? I don't have a dime, dude, but I'll give you I'll give you a dollar. I've got two dollars. I'll give you one of them. But me, I, FYI, me and my wife live in that blue car. There were three cats. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want your money. I thought you were like a normal person. No, no, no. Here, why don't, <laughs> he pulls out some steak from behind the vending machine. He's like, why don't you meet my friends at 19th and Lincoln in an hour, and we'll go into the park and have a barbecue at midnight. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, just meet us there. It's cool, man. So I met these guys, and all these homeless people met us at 19th and Lincoln at the park. And But they don't close Golden Gate Park. There's no gates or anything. You can just walk in all night. Uh-huh. And uh, and the, and so we went to the grill, and they grilled steak and smoked a bunch of weed. And and uh, they wanted to get us gacked out on... Well, we didn't take any of the hard shit, but... But they, they, and it was like that kind of stuff. So that'll happen. And then, you know, but it's, there's no certainty in it. No, it? there's no certainty. And so in the it. greener, the grass is greener thing is like, man, it'd be nice to just know that I've got a place. I got, I'm so transient that if I've got a hotel room for three days, I'll put posters on the wall. <laughs> it's like, I'm like Start oh my your gosh, I can actually stay here for like three days, you know, and then I, I decorate the room <laughs> just to indulge my, my domestic needs. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, I, just, I, I just think that's super interesting, you know, being able to, um, I've watched like some of the YouTube videos. There's people now that are doing the same thing, but they're they're doing the YouTube videos. But I watched this guy turn his SUV into like a a camping thing where he has all the stuff he needs. He carries food with him. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and then he has a little solar panel on top of his truck, and he has like a. I always wonder. Yeah, I I the van life videos that I like yeah. are the ones where they're like, man, van life sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't stand the ones where they're all like, man, this is going to be great. Cause there was one couple I finally found. It was a couple. It was a man and a woman and they're younger ish, not super young, but whatever. And they were like, well, we've been doing this for a month and we're tired. And I'm like, Oh, I love you. Yeah. Cause you're being really <laughs> <lovely."> Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, yeah, I can do, I've got everything I need in this two foot square little box that is completely dependent on every cop and that happens to walk by. And, because you know everybody's a rat. You learn. Yeah. You know. You, you know. You park outside of Grandma's house in Glendale, California, and she'll. And all of a sudden, the cops, the Glendale cops, are knocking on your window because you're a loud van that looks like drug dealers live in it. You know. Mm-hmm. And the cops, and she calls the cops because she's afraid. And you don't argue with these. You can't argue with anybody. And you don't even try. Or you think that the people with the tribal tattoos are cool, and maybe your car broke down, and you and you and you and you and you had to drag your trailer. We had a trailer another time. It was an R stream trailer. Had that dragged into storage. In a RV park in Calif- in uh, Pismo Beach, Gro- uh, Grover Beach, technically, and but you know we couldn't afford to stay in the RV park. We could only afford the storage, so we had the boondocking vehicle, which was another Taurus, a different Taurus, and so we traded nights. So I would sleep the night in the Taurus, and then she would be. I'd smuggle her into the storage facility to spend the night with uh, the cats yeah. in the trailer, and then we'd switch nights, and then it'd be my night to get some sleep. But we couldn't spend any time together. And then the the cool couple of you know partying cool people you know uh, and they looked like punk rocker or you know rockabilly you know they weren't like you know they weren't yuppies or something sure. right and we're th- and they saw us doing the 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 covert exchange of you know and they and then within ten minutes there's like some park some like RV park employees going oh, you can't spend the night here it's uh. like why would you rat us out yeah. you know. And so you learn, and so you start to become super neurotic about light, noise, and it's it, that's the downside. Yeah, is that you don't have any sense of propriety over anything. The upside is when it starts to get stupid, you just walk out the door and you leave, and you can leave now. Yeah, within five minutes, gone for life. I mean, it, and that's nice, but it's also not like anything, like sure. everything. Right. Anyway, and everything's got its ups and downs. Yeah. You know. But no, but there is a certain. It's fun though too. Romanticism like you say, you get to, to get yeah. to have steak with a bunch of homeless stoners. At midnight in the park, that that you know. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. So, um, that's the, fun. <laughs> the the whole big risk, big rewards. You know, it seems like whenever you're a kid, you're willing to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But as you get older, you kind of start calming down and get a little more centered and yeah. try to be more normal and have a family or whatever. Um, and so you don't have as many big adventures because you're not willing to sure. make the big risk. Yeah. You got more to lose. You know. You yeah, I guess. It's, yeah, I guess you got so. More to lose. Yeah. I would. I wouldn't mind having a little more to lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's part of like the way you. That's, yeah. Well, yeah, the way that you would um, you get criminals but to it, to be good is to give them a job, get them yeah, a yeah. house, and all that kind of Yeah. So now they're like, life, yeah, they're like, know? oh, now I got a job, and I have to, I have to be good because I want to keep these nice things. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I didn't have I don't before. Feel like living in the flop house with uh, thirty other people 30 or whatever. Other, you know, and the, and the bugs, three different species of cockroach in the bathroom, and I yeah. have to leave the lights on at night so I don't go to sleep with dead bugs on my feet every day. And you know, and you, you know, and you get tired of living in those places. You know, and I've spent lots of time in those places mm-hmm. and uh, places where, you know, some your junkie girlfriend calls some thug friends of hers to come and kick your ass because you she broke you broke up each, again, and uh, a bunch of thugs show up and. You get a call from the front desk, and they're like, "Yeah, uh, some guys from your job are here to see you." And I'm like, "I don't have a job." Yeah. <laughs> so like, you take out your wallet, you put on a shirt you don't care about, and you go downstairs and see what these guys want. And they're like, "Hey, you owe us some money," and they're all trying to. And you're like, "What, man? I don't know her nothing. I don't know who." You th-. And then they, you know, they one two you real quick, and you don't even know you've been hit until you wake up on the floor. And you and you wake up on the floor, and these guys are running out. And the guy at the front desk is just sitting there reading the paper, doesn't pay any attention, <laughs> doesn't even flinch, doesn't care. You don't want him to care. He's not going to call the cops. You don't want him to call the cops. Mm-hmm. You don't ask him to call the cops. You just get up from the floor, go back to your room, and finish your joint. You know, 
and 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 that's cool. I don't, you know, you wouldn't get that at the Holiday Inn Express, right? But then again, the, you know. But I'm saying, is that the price for the big adventures, for right. the big big Maybe. stories, the yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the big ideas, the big inspirations? Yeah. I mean, and, and that's that. where the lyrics are coming. That's it's mm-hmm. not it's not like I'm like I'm not you know imagining. It's all true. It's all happened at some level. You yeah, know, some of it literally, and uh, most of it literally, really. But so um, we're gonna play the next song. We'll play is the uh, my asses. Um, <laughs> my ass is hooked on dynamite. Yeah, is hooked on dynamite. <laughs> so, is there anything about that song, like a story that goes along with that? I don't remember. Yeah, that's. I, I love this song. It's actually a live staple. Okay, but uh, I need a bass. I need a band for it. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a. It, there's my set list would be quadrupled and or tripled at least if I had a band. Even, sure. Especially like a Nick Cave sized you know band with three or four instrumentalists. Yeah, but this one has that dirty bass. It's kind of yeah, that rockabilly But even run. just a rhythm section would double my set list overnight. Yeah. You know, and this song would be on it if I had a bass player and a drummer. This is a good one. Um, this is a lot of Yeah, fun. there's truth in it. I don't remember the... Uh, there's some... It's, it kind of gives you... I think I remember there's like this, you know, there's this negative vibe where you're like... I think at one point, like one of the refrains is, I'm the scum of the earth. Yeah, yeah. I'm the That's scum good. of the earth. And I, I don't believe in that kind of thing anymore. I think you. I think you are... It doesn't mean that you're necessarily becoming the scum of the earth when you say that, but I think you... You, I, I used to think that there was power in owning the darkness and your weakness and alcoholic clown records and uh, you know, I'm the scum of the earth, you know, and I'm a failure but I'm free. I'll hitch my trailer to the sea. And it's like, no, I don't want to sing I'm a failure because I don't want to create my reality that way. I'm, I don't think that, I think, it's, I think you, know, you, you know, any 20 years now I'll be getting my big break is apparently kind of true. Because that song is 16 years old, uh-huh. so I only got four years now before yeah. I get my. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting close. God willing, it'll you yeah. know, maybe it'll cut it short a little bit, you know. But uh, so it's not like it's an untrue song, and I'll play it, you know, God willing, you know, if I, you know, if I had a band and a, you know, I'll play it for the rest of my life. It's a cool song, and I won't change the lyrics to make them. They, you know, you got to s- stick to the truth of the tune, you know, whatever. Yeah. But uh, it's yeah, that part's not true anymore. I'm not the scum of the earth, and neither is any of us. Yeah, you know? no, I, I, <laughs> but you think you're. You think you're o- you're somehow uh, it's owning something, it's, right? It's you but, are you're owning the future of absolute negativity. You know, and, neg- yeah, yeah. Good luck. No, I think um, <laughs> I like the verse. The I don't know why we're getting into the Bible t- tonight, but the um, word you know, I forgot who it was, but Ray said, "God, who are you?" And God's like, "I am." That was his answer. I am. And then so I always thought of, of "I am" as being like a prayer. So whatever you finish with. After well, actually, I am, actually, I think Proverbs you know, eighteen twelve, and I'm not sure if it's eighteen twelve or twelve eighteen, and I might be wrong, but I think it's Proverbs eighteen twelve that says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." So if you say, "I," if I say, "Hi, my name is Nathan, and I'm an alcoholic," I am actually by my own tongue binding myself to the condition of slavery. I am saying, I, "That's why I'm not a program guy. I've been sober for five years." Yeah. But I don't say, and if we're talking about the Bible, I'll do. I'll preach for five seconds. I'll, I don't say. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm an alcoholic. I'll say, Hi, I'm Nathan. I've been delivered from alcohol by the blood and grace of Jesus Christ. That's what I say. Yeah. And 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 uh, so that's delivery. I don't. I don't have to go to the program. You know what the program is? Is the real? It's a religion. It is a religion. It's a religion, and it's good. It's better than laying on the side of the road with for a needle sure. in your arm. Good for you. I'm not knocking it. I'm glad about it. It's a good thing, but I don't like it. Right. <laughs> no, people. Some people I need don't it. Like it. It's and, never and worked for me. Yeah. The one time I had a sponsor, it doesn't work for me. Sitting around listening to people talk about alcohol for two hours is not only a boring waste of time. It actually makes you want to drink. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like that sounds. I mean, it doesn't make. Doesn't it sound like fun? But it's, mm-hmm. it's kind it's, of it's creating the appetites. It's, mm-hmm. it's reminding me mm-hmm. that I don't want to be reminded. I mean, I can. You all could be right now. You're all. I don't mind people. I don't care about. I'm free of it. I don't. Doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. I had a girlfriend uh, uh, who drank to drunkenness on a. Some. I don't. I don't. Whatever. If you were a heroin injecting, I might. You now it's time to. I gotta go. It's not. Yeah. Be like this is my scene. Yeah. I've I'm done. Not gonna, no, I'm not going to like spit on you and say you're freaking me out, man. I'm going to relapse. No, nah, brother, you need to quit. I'm out. Yeah. Good luck. I Good. love you, but cheers, I'm leaving. But I'm not I'm not put off by it, you know. Uh, do a line in front of me or whatever. Yeah, I'm not like, going to join you. I've even head. quit smoking weed, man, and I like weed, dude. <laughs> weed is good for you, man. It's yeah. good for you. It's like kombucha. It's like tea, man. It's like healthy. I don't even smoke weed anymore. It's ridiculous. Just keep it straight edge. <laughs> keep it straight edge. <laughs> Fun bummer. <laughs> yeah, for real. All right, well, this is, uh, this is the... My ass is hooked on dynamite. Uh, the moon is a pearl on a necklace. 
Venus and stars My arms are full of snake bites and constellations And scars and Don't ask directions Watch where you spit The moon is full The moon is full of shit Well I've known a few Never known a woman without a price But I know out there somewhere is a girl whose heart is pure What makes you think I care? What makes you think you're her? Someone tell me something please I don't already know Look for water on the flames But it only makes you flow I may be a doomsday preacher I may be a fallen saint But in love with you forever, baby, is one thing that I hate. Lock scum of the earth. 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 Don't you know what it's worth? What's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours. In this world of horror amateurs Well, I may not be admired But I've acquired so much wealth To what end have I destroyed myself? Someone tell me something, please I don't already know I pour water on the flames But it only makes them grow I may be a doomsday preacher I may be a fallen saint but in love with you forever, baby, is the one thing that I ain't got the scum of the earth. I'm the scum of the earth. I'm the scum of the earth. I'm the scum of the earth. Now, oh, don't you know what it's worth? I'm the love that makes you cringe I'm the paralyzing poison in your pretty pink syringe My ass is hooked on dynamite and my brains have gone to rot It takes more balls to be strong if you're not Welcome back to the Funky Town Podcast. <laughs> Were you that was yeah. Okay, and so you got Zach. We're we're oh. we're live, baby. <laughs> 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 this shit is hot. Hot, hot, hot. I'm kind of want to the leave the commentary track on underneath. I'm sorry, Zach. That's okay. Paying no attention to the track at all. That was my ass. Is hooked on dy- dynamite. Um, really neat song. Yeah. If uh. If you got to hear the commentary track, uh, we talked a little about. Um, we could take a, a poll of the room. Kind of what I thought yeah, I about it. Song and okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it. At, I'll put it at the end of the episode underneath the song again. <laughs> or Anyways, yeah. If you want to email us about how much you like that song, uh, email us at fucktownpodcast at gmail dot com. It's a really neat thing to do, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. We'll enjoy it. We'll even read it here, like here on the show. Mm-hmm. So um, get to it. And definitely check out Nathan Payne stuff. Yes. We might be getting an email from, from some Mormons. Oh, that'd be neat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're waiting on you guys, a couple of guys 
rode up on on bicycles and they stopped in front of the house and they kind of talked to each Last other night? no no just now earlier like, oh. like 20 minutes before no not even 20 minutes like yeah, 10 yeah, minutes, 10 before, minutes you came, before you guys got here and they stopped and they kind of talked to each other or whatever and they kind of looked at us and they talked a little bit more and then all of a sudden they're like hey hey can we talk to you guys no are they yeah can <laughs> can can we give you a card yeah can we, yeah, yeah can and we we're like yeah sure so they came up and they're like oh what would they say do you know anybody that you I know uh, tracked about mormonism do you want to hear the do you want to hear the good news about jesus oh no oh yeah you have a trick track? Ch- uh, you know Jack Chick? He did. Well, I got all these in Spanish. Oh, yeah, I know those tracks. Okay. Yeah, the cartoon tracks. Mm hmm. Dude, some of those scared me when I was a kid. Yeah, some of them are scary. Mm-hmm. I used. I, I, well, I don't tell anybody, but uh, California Death Trip, the album cover. Uh, I know you're not all familiar with it, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, go to, the, go to the, the, the California Death Trip album cover. Um. The, the there's like a, a double face of me, right? This is one about Mormonism, but uh, visitors. <laughs> I know, right? Ooh. It's like some jo- like some so, John Carpenter movie, you know. So poor I read all these when but, I was uh, kid. I'll give you all more of these when I leave. But like, uh, what was I talking about? We got all distracted. <laughs> <We're laughs> uh, Mor- Mormons and uh, oh uh, yeah, I don't wh- know what I was. Talking what about what is this this trick trap? California Death Trap. Album. Oh, California Death oh, Trap. The, the zombie face picture that i glue on i have a there's two pictures of me it's the Mm -hmm. same photograph and one is me and then one is me with a zombie face and the zombie face is from a chick track Mm -hmm. Uh, don't tell anybody (laughs) so these things (laughs) are the secret you would find these now now chick.com is going to ask for for uh for sorry what yes he just died he was like 90 something he died a couple years a year ago Hmm. or something but you would find them just laid about churches would pass and it's usually fundamental i leave them yeah yeah, yeah, stations and I, I, and, yeah, you know, know, and so you'll read I got them. them all in Spanish for my Mexican adventure. Yeah, it's <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a comic strip. They're fun to toss out like confetti. You know, you got to look at them. Some of them are specific to a certain need. Like if you all hadn't brought the Mormons up, I might not have brought them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that one's about Mormonism. So next time they show up, you can say, "This is why y'all are out your freaking minds." Right. Well, no, we <laughs> asked them. We asked them if they wanted to hear the good news of the Funky Town podcast. Okay, go ahead. And then, yeah. and then, and then Joe actually asked them if they wanted some literature, and they're like, "No, no." But I was, and I wanted to see what literature all, yeah, Joe like, had to pull know, out. It's got the kind of the appearance of. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. comic strip. But it's like yeah. it's like it's just devil is smart. It's just subtle enough. I don't know, it's man. Just what? just slightly not liberating enough to be a bummer to most rational people. When I was when I was like, a kid, oh, I would, you got to dress. Now y'all have to wear these ugly clothes and. I mean, not bumming. I don't care what you wear, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, now you have to wear a uniform, and it's not appealing to people. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the trick. So do you believe so in? It's got Jesus on the cover, but that doesn't mean he's on. The, it's like, it's like just because he's on the cover or he's on the, his picture is in the room doesn't mean he's in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, so those yeah, that's a good one about Mormonism. I, I haven't read it in a long time, but I I remember that I liked it and it made sense. Now, I used to read these when I was yeah, a kid, I but like I said, a lot of them kind of scared me because a lot of them were about the rapture or about the yeah. beast or the about beast, hell uh, and six six six, six, you know, six system and the whole antichrist pope and all that yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, I'm, you know, yeah. Some of them are and some of them are like for children and it was, super sweet and yeah, you get you, you got to select them a little bit. Yeah. Some of you got to wait for the right opportune moment for each one. You don't just want to. You can, I do, but you also say, "Well, this one is really not for gen. It's for a specific moment, anyway." That one is about Mormons, but uh, yeah, they're, they they yeah, that scary artwork. I used I used it for I've used it for posters. I've used chick track work for band show posters in the past because some of it's kind of good. Some of it is good. Yeah. It's really interesting. I've got some old movies too yeah. that are kind of the same. Christian propaganda type stuff, which is kind of interesting. Fascinating. None of this was on the menu for me growing up. Yeah, I couldn't get away from it. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, no, I haven't seen one of these, but yeah, I mean, my church would give them out and stuff, but I would also just find them random places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It may also be living in the Bible Belt. That stuff is more apparent. Did you find them a lot of times when you were a kid, Denver? I had a I had a friend who was a missionary, and I went and hung out with him in Ukraine, and uh, they I think that was the it was just right outside of my uh it was right in my what do you call that peripheral peripheral okay. yeah i never i, I yeah no, I, had I was my wondering own. if it was a texas thing or if it was just me well, living in a very fundamental house i mean thing. Well, yeah there's there's not a lot of fundamental um christians in montana generally right. speaking but um no we had watchtower and awake um laying around at my grandma's house what is that those are the uh jehovah's witnesses um, oh okay books there's another one in here about them Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the other visitors. The other visitors. Yeah, the thing. Now, 
Let me think if it was on it. Um, the kids who don't participate in the Valentine's party <laughs> at school. <laughs> The show last night was interesting um, because about halfway through, you were singing a song like where the chorus was mainly uh, "You can suck my tits." Yeah, was part of it or whatever, (laughs) right? And then um, all of a sudden, a couple little girls come in, and they come in and they sit down on the the lazy chair, and then her dad's in the back, and he's all like, "I guess he's live streaming it or something or Instagram. I don't know. He's got his phone out, he's recording it, you know." And you just, I mean, I see you notice them, and it's like, and I wonder, I'm like. I wonder if he, I wonder if he's going to change this up at all or not. And you didn't. I mean, you're like, this is the way the song goes. I was doing the song before the kids came in the room. So oh, you, I remember that, right? And so, I mean, you did yeah. the song exactly how it, it is done, and then you finished, and you're like, okay, now the next song I was going to do, I'm not going to do right now because yeah. Yeah. it's not really child appropriate. But right. I thought it was it, it, it's interesting, you know. I mean, like, as as an artist, you're aware, like, when the kids walk in, you're like, I, what do I do? I Should I keep going with sucking tits well, or should I, I yeah. <laughs> or should I like you know just kill it or I mean it's also <laughs> not a bad word it's not yeah you it's, know. it's a crass lyric but it's not actually cursing per se you can't I've I've actually grappled I don't like that word I've grappled with that my whole life and and um, with uh, is this appropriate and is this what I believe and is this but you know the lyric is the lyric and so mm-hmm. when I wrote it's what it's mm-hmm. uh Something in me, something in me, when I was writing it, was like, I don't want to sing this. Uh, get on your knees and kiss my tits. I do as I please. It's what it's. But it's the lyric. That's the song. That's what it is, and that's the true song, and it's about true things, and and it's you know, all that. And so I rewrote it, uh, just the chorus to make it what palatable to the average offended person. And then it, then that but it was a, one of those unusual, very unusual situations where I was actually I was in Arkansas, and I wrote it in a hotel. And then I, my buddy lives in Arkansas, and I was visiting him, and then he had a recording situation, so I recorded it the day I wrote it. Okay, which yeah, yeah, never happens. Mm-hmm. It, well, sometimes, like three times. But usually, you sit on it for a little and while. I, and I kinda... got to the time of okay, now I have to track it, and there was no way I could actually record the fake edited lyric i had to track the original lyric as it came from the faucet from straight up not filtered you know uh you know i'm not gonna sing uh the song dope song off of the stupid old heart album the heroin you effing bitch i hate you i'm not gonna sing that song is obsolete you know uh but i wouldn't even if it wasn't i wouldn't change the lyric in, right. the, in the context of the show but when the little kids show up okay well maybe we're not gonna play I think the F word song. You yeah. know what I mean? We'll 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 wait. And if they stay, I won't play it. It's not it's not sacred. It's a song. Right. It's cool. I like it, but I'm not it's not like we're not you know it's not it's not all that. I can there's not like the sh- oh, what am I gonna do? You know, I'll just play another song. I got a you know, another one I can play. And um then they left and which I was, you know, Neither here nor there about, you know, not happy or sad about, but it was nice. To, it was a fun show. No, I, th- I thought it was really People neat. I mean, they came in and they just, and you know, and they just kind of watched it and they're exposed to something they're probably not normally exposed yeah, to. Yeah, I was grateful. You know? to, I was, they were grateful and I was grateful. So it was just this unusual gratitude. It's really a gra- grateful environment from all angles. Um, and that was, uh, that was a treat. That was a privilege. That was, that was, a, that was fun. Is this your first time to F- Fort Worth? Uh, other than just being through it uh, to avoid Dallas, so when you're driving yeah. north or south, and you're like, well, 35 east or west, and you're like, I don't feel like going through Dallas today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not stopping in either one. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, this is my first time. So technically, I've, I've been yeah being through it on the freeway yeah. doesn't count. I think yeah. whenever you're heading back from Mexico, you should. Th- oh, definitely. You should think I'm about maybe. For, I'm hoping for. You should come through I'm, here. With, maybe stay without, first. without any yeah without knowing any what this means. I'm actually looking forward to whatever that entails. Yeah, oh, that'll be it. Cause there ain't nothing. I unless something else, something unless Nick Cave calls, right? And mm-hmm. Says, "Oh, we got your tweet from October. Yeah, you wanna? We're gonna cover one of your songs." And I'll be like, "Okay, cool." Now our name is on the map, and uh, and anybody wants to come along for the ride, and let's let's make some let's make a living. Let's make a living. It's not about putting your name on the tail fin of a seven sixty seven. It's about paying the rent. Right. <laughs> no, that's that's. I mean, I think guess I guess everybody has their own thing, but some, some people may be like, I I, I want to have. I mean, you could, yeah, you could yeah, afford I mean, it. You yeah, know, I mean, maybe some people maybe just getting into to, to, to music because they want to have 
the big airplanes and the yeah, cover Rolling yeah. Stone and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm kind of like I just want to pay most rent. Artists, yeah, they, those people are maybe on the radio, but most there's a million of us right in every square inch of this country and everywhere else. That's like just they you, you have I just to wanna, write. You uh, just yeah. have to play your stuff. This and I just want to be able I, to pay rent. I want to be yeah. able to eat. Maybe yeah. if I get sick, go to the doctor. Right. Yeah. That, Nothing yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> asking for the moon. No. It's you know. Just uh, treat it like. Uh, a trade. I see music as like you know. Do you as, as like a trade, like plumbing mm-hmm. or being a car mechanic or an electrician? It's not divine in the sense that you know, because a lot of artists that they're successful for twenty five or thirty years or more or whatever, they start to think that they're like they're all that. You know, like oh here I am, you're welcome. You know, and it's like one thing that not being recognized at all in general by select groups of people occasionally, but not on a wide scale at all is like is like. I, it's actually a trade, you know. So it's it's um, it's. Do you go to the, do you go get your oil change and say, yeah, uh, thanks. Do you mind if I give you a dollar? Is that cool? That's all I got left over after right. buying the beer, you know. And and no, you pay the guy for his time. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you make that into a system that actually translates into a workable living for working musicians of any and every genre? Because you know, in the symphonic world, they've got their unions. Uh, sure, jazz scale, world probably yeah. does too. How do you unionize a bunch of bar bands? I mean, it's 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 like impossible, actually. Kind of, maybe. It seems impossible. It sounds impossible. It doesn't occur to me as remotely possible. But how are you going to get a bunch of bands who are going to break up in six months to unionize so that the bars stop exploiting them for peanuts on the dollar? You're not even pennies. You're not even getting me change. I'm getting like the leftover crumbs from the, you know, I get I'm living off of tips. I'm you know I'm living in a car. Yeah. Now see, this is. And you can't maintain a relationship because you got to bring home the bread. I mean, you know, you do. You know, you want to. Right. <laughs> See, I, I'm not. So and it's because I, I go back and forth. I have lots of friends who are for the universal wage, and I'm kind of like, I don't like universal I'm not wage. For it. But yeah. this is the only argument that I could think for having it. That's why I, I'm not for it. I, I don't. I, I know what you're saying because as a homeless, starving musician, at least if you had 500 bucks a month kind of coming to you, you would, to where you could it get, it would be food. like, well, you know what? I could actually use your your income, and. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to fall for the temptation, you know, because now I can't rise above and, 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 and be the community thing is used as a it's, it's like the community never needs me. I always need it. Mm-hmm. It's never saying, oh, we need you. You are you. You're you. I'm me. It's we're I'm not they. You're not the, us. We're, we're I am me. You're you. So but they never need me. They don't need you. You need them. Ask them. They'll tell you. You, you need us, you know, and so how they that's how they so then you can't individually ever become anything, wh- whether you're a car mechanic or so the, the UBI would be very attractive to artistic types of mm-hmm. any medium um, because it's hard to make a living. Right. And it is. And all that's, you know, we could talk about now. This could be a long show. It will or not. It's not going to be that long. Don't worry. But, <laughs> but like it's like it's. um. But you know what? If you if I take your your. Uh, take your payoff if i take your bribe as a, with a ubi then now i'm stuck here now all i can do is pay the rent and i can't rise above that okay and it's like it's like well what what would be better is to revalue when well, i was talking about this with a friend of uh denver is and all them was last night um is to revalue the arts and how do you revalue the arts so that they're actually valuable to people okay it's easy to download and rip uh, music and things and movies and all kinds of mediums. Yeah, media easier than free. ever. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. It's going to get done. It, the cat is out of the bag. Uh, it that's the way it is. It's and I, we're all for the internet. You're insane. If, it's a, obviously a great thing. How do you uh, make it so that the people see it as valuable and that they could check any comment section? Well, not any comment section, but you'll see it regularly in comment sections on you know YouTube or social media. You know, like oh, this movie is free as it should be. It's like, well, somebody's going to have to get paid to make it. Right. The guys that plug in the lights cost money. The director, the camera people, the actors. The lights, the cameras. to the... make the movie. They're yeah. getting paid. But nobody's getting paid to make the record. Mm-hmm. And then the record not only isn't getting paid to get made, when it gets made, it's considered, well, you made it for free, so now I can make it for free. Well, okay. So then, so anyway, long, cut to the chase. When, if, we, I think the golden age of it's art because I say it's art needs to die right now it needs to be over if it's art because i say it's art and i say that that bottle of beard and i and i pour some red paint on it and throw it against the wall and call it 
my girlfriend's, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah, fill in the blanks. It's not only get gross. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that it's art. Then that means nothing is art because anything can be art. And if nothing is art, then art has no value. Yeah, but if how everything do you... is art and nothing is art, then art is valueless. And if that's the mindset of the society, then it's naturally going to assume that what you're doing is worthless. If, especially if they're not artistic people who can just go get a job for a living. And I say, if, well, if you think that it's free, then I want you to give me your shoes right now. No debate. If you want, if you think that what I do is worth nothing and that the song belongs to all of us is the phrase, then give me your shoes. Because they belong to all of us, and I want them. Because I need them. I just bought some new shoes, but I don't. But, <laughs> but you give me some. Give me your shoes anyway, because I could, these are going to wear out, and you have ten pairs. Because so, I think the UBI idea is that it keeps you down, and, and yeah, it gives you a, a temporary. It's like fast, but it gives you a temporary filler. But I don't, it's not sustainable for. It's not. It doesn't incentivize growth or personal. You you, you tends to. It's like you just kind of being a junk, a financial junkie. You're dependent. Well, now I, you're I, not going to... I think you're right about it. Because I know that once you start to be become dependent, which you will be dependent on that money, as soon as you start to get it... You yeah, know. you're going to get used no, to it quickly. Sure. We, all, quickly. We, all, we all would. And then so and then now they own you. because Now then they can say, oh, well, you wrote a song with the word tits in it. That's offensive to Joe Blow because it's going to be offensive to somebody. Right. And this is why, this is stuff that I'm, these chick tracks, it's not religion. Because, you know, because who wants to live in a, a world where you can never be offended? Mm -hmm. Religious people. They want to live in, a, and I don't mean like Christians, but I mean right. people that are in religious cults. Right. They build those cults as bubbles against offense. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. I mean, well, it's about control. We usually some crazy lunatic in the middle of it, like James Jones or whatever his name is. But like, uh, it's about. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> We're just <laughs> talking. Was, yeah. Like train of thought. Man. Universal. Universal way, yeah. It was that for a while, yeah. you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as far as like them uh, them owning you, once the, once you're dependent on that, then. Yeah, you then know. you kind of can't. Then they control you, and then they can dictate your output. And if you've got a thought that maybe you decide isn't appropriate for children, so you decide not to sing it in front of children. But what if they decide that you can't even put it on the Internet because some child might, might see it? Might find it, right. And it's like, okay, well, now I can't even say it. You know, Even if I want to edit it for a 5-year-old or a 10-year-old, now I can't even say it to the 30-year-old because because the, it's like I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, you know, right, or no, and, I don't either. And I want to be able to say what I want to say, you know. Um, and it's you know it's gonna. If, who, I mean, are, aren't who aren't you ever? I mean, aren't, I'm offended on a regular basis. I don't call the cops about it. Right. It's just such as life, mm -hmm. you know. And people and, are offensive and I, sometimes. I, you know what are you? I mean, you know, get over it. You'll be all right. Trust me. You actually would. It actually is good for you a little bit. You know. You know because that means you have to use your your if you really are a better person than the rest of us, which is what they think. Mm -hmm. If you're really better than me, then you can actually use that as a strengthening tool to now be tough and not be offended. Ha, huh, try it, because mm. it'll work, actually. <laughs> right. Be the better then, person. Then you can actually <laughs> handle a George Carlin or a Bill Hicks sketch, you know, which are offensive, or Sam Kinison or Letty Bruce had that problem 50 years ago, mm -hmm. or something, roughly, whatever it was. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, why not, you know, so uh, I don't want the religious cult in control. You know, I want a, the liberty to say and do, you know, as long as children and animals aren't involved and it's consensual, but I want the liberty to say and do as I please right? for all intents and purposes. You know, short of murder, rape, vandalizing people's property, theft, obvious stuff. You know? Right. But like, you know, saying, you know, the F word on, on, a, on a podcast or, or it's using the word, you know, uh, or saying, you know, whatever it is, whatever, a, mm -hmm. a crass joke about, you know, using the word tits and somebody's going to say, well, that, that hurts my feelings. And I'm like, well, your offendedness hurts my feelings, but I'm not going to call the cops because your offendedness offends me. Because that's a, a cycle, then all of a sudden, you're in a, in a religious cult where now all you can do is you have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and we're in the program. And yes, I am an alcoholic and I am a complete cult member and I must comply, 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 comply. No liberty allowed, no individual thought allowed, and now you're, tr you're trapped. And you, if you try to get out of that, you're going to be in a real. You're going to have a real hard time. Now, Whereas if you prevent that from becoming possible in the first place, you might have a chance. But if you let them shackle you with fear, you're screwed. I don't know. So there's the. There's the Nine Inch Nails line, or maybe it's the name of the song. It's um, "Happiness and Slavery." 
Yeah. You know, he's like, you'll find happiness in slavery. Don't you think that some people oh, yeah, find yeah, yeah, happiness yeah, in that kind of, the, like, they need mm-hmm. the rules. They oh, need yeah. to be not offended. They need to know what's black and white. It's got to be this. The only problem is when they impose it on. on right, of course. Mm-hmm. If, if it's good for you, then whatever, no, man. Hey, but it's not good. Out. Like I say, I don't right. you know. If you want to walk around in a, in, a, in a uniform, in a religious uniform, and whether it's an orange robe or a business tie suit looking thing, and, and um, go for it. I'm just wondering if you, if, wanna, uh, if you want to slam dope into your eyeballs all day, and uh, you know, I, I'm going to sympathize with you. I probably won't hang out with you, but you know, I don't think you should be taken to jail for it. Right? You know, if you're selling weed or heroin or methamphetamines, on you know, I don't think that that's personally, and we don't have to agree on it. We don't. Have to, I don't have to agree with anybody on anything. I think everybody should be able to disagree about everything and still get along. My friend and Jerome is a Satanist, freaking Satanist. You know. And we're buddies. We're not. Yeah, it, there's a there's a difference there, and it cross and the swords do become. It's it's there is a distance spiritually that is you know we're not deny it. It's not, but it doesn't mean that as a or my other friend in Jerome, who's a gay socialist Catholic, mm-hmm. we agree about nothing, dude. I mean nothing, but we respect each other's intellect and we like talking to each other and we love each other as friends and that's good enough. And we agree about nothing, dude. And he's like. Gay. I'm not. I'm not anti-gay. You know. I just. I'm not gay. But I'm not. But he's like this gay Catholic socialist. You know. And uh, we disagree about everything. But we're friends. You know. Why? And if you have to agree with everybody around you, I think you're in a cult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no. It's get ready for the hail bop and get ready for the leader to say we're going to have to kill ourselves so that the, you know, it was funny. Free-minded people, the Nazis, don't. You know. It's like God. Yeah. Real. See, I'm still a little weird about that because even like last night I was going to. Um, Mentioned whenever you were thinking about, huh, I wonder what song I should play. I was going to um, yell out the George Bush. What's the, oh, yeah, George, you know? what, George Bush, what's your problem? Yeah, but still being in t- 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 Texas, and I knew most of the people at that house. I don't know everybody. I'm like, I don't. I, I don't even know those lyrics anymore it, anyway. Yeah. I think I only played that song that time. Yeah. Time the, I ever really, it's, it's cool. I mean, it, obviously, I like it. But yeah. But I'm saying even as, you know, it's like I try not to get into politics at shows when we're around people because we Neither do live do in Texas and, and, you know, it's like, I don't really know who is, you know, so I mean, I can sit there and just assume because you're cool and everything that maybe you don't like Trump because I don't like Trump. And then I start talking shit about Trump and you're like, dude, you're an asshole. I like Trump. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I had no idea. That you know? that it's all like a big deal now. You didn't used to have. It to didn't agree. used to be right. You didn't didn't have to agree with the guy or whoever it is to. You used to be able to fr- talk to, to communicate with them. And my, fr- and my friends, <laughs> now I you c- can't even communicate with them unless you agree. Right. I, I, well, right. That scares me. Actually. I think my friends I can do that with because I mean like me and Bigfoot have got into it about like some of the economic stuff which we both disagree on for like an hour and a half we sat outside just talking and talking and talking and we're still great, great friends yeah, you know yeah. um, but it's, it's strangers it's well, whatever of course yeah. and, it always is and, and that's, the, that's, a, that's a I think that's a huge red flag in the culture and the society is that you can't people don't respect the idea that you can just kind of now they think they have to impose their will on you well, right. that's really frightening to me but see like I didn't want to bring never imposed my will on anybody I mean, well, I mean, no, I mean, not, you know what I mean? Right, of course. Yeah. 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 No, I haven't. Maybe a couple of bad fares when I was a cab driver. But I mean, you know, but not like, you know, oh, no, you don't agree with what I believe? Well, then I guess I'm going to have to lock you in a cage and yeah. take away your right to do this. And uh, no, ridiculous. Beat you up, take away all your money. Yeah, take your money. You're going to have to get punished. You know, you, you no longer, uh, I'm going to have to take away your internet access. And, and uh, now you have to wear a yellow star on your sleeve. And it's ridiculous to me. So it's frightening to me that you can't disagree with average Joe on the street without a, you have to be afraid to talk about say Trump or whatever because you might get into like this religious disagreement. Right, but it goes which is like fundamentalism, hardcore. The the but I think the politics of our country today are where people get their religious uh, rocks off. It has gotten that way, I think, because yeah. because even I think it's really scary because even on the left. Mm-hmm. Which is where I, I like to hang out at. So yeah. you know, I'm not yeah. even bashing to, the left. I used to think I was but, a liberal, but it's it's. But they're getting crazy now. It's like it's become they they're lost, they lost. Me. They're becoming more they lost offended, me. and it's not it's all not of what them, I thought but it was it's, about. It's what you I thought hear. It was about live and let live. You know, that's what I thought it was about, and anti-war and stuff. Right. And 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 and, and, and well, well I, the Democratic I'm, Party is no longer anti-war. No, they're just as big warriors as, and, as the Republican um, Party or Hawks. I was or all about Paris Hilton in 2016. I was I was voting. I, I was like I was like big. I was on the Paris Hilton ticket with Snoop Dogg as the as the D as the. Uh, <laughs> See, I was thinking Nicole Richie so they could do like the the TV you know, show they used to have. And then, oh. but she had a great economic platform. I loved it. She's got a T-shirt and she's in a club and. You know, and she's hot, right? And she says, "Stop being poor." 
I'm like, that's a great economic platform. I love mm-hmm. that. You know, this is what this country needs: is stop being poor. Well, because poor that's is a state that's of mind. Our, that's our economic platform. It's not any. That's all we need. Just and stop being poor. But, but we can actually do that. We can be like, poverty is a state of mind. Being poor is a state of mind. It is. You're only it's poor because you think you're poor. Right. You can have nothing and still have everything. Right. Do it agree? Yeah, I think so. Oh, no, no. I mean, there really is that 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 thought. But at but at the end of the day, you got to f- fucking buy milk for your baby. You right, got to no, buy milk for day, your baby, yeah, and it's ground, like boots on the ground situations that are. Undeniable. But you do need to look at you know because I do, I do think the um um if you look at what you have, you're more likely to get more, and if you look at what you don't have, you're more likely to get less because you're focusing I, yeah, on it's right. the whole I am negative kind of thing or whatever. Yeah. So I agree. you know, I do think that if uh, the Poverty is not a state. I mean, it really is p- poverty. But if you can look at it as what, be thankful for what, what, what you have. I think well, I over think time I, you can I, you get, know, there's, you there's can bring a, more. There's in. not a spirit of gratitude here anymore in the U.S. It's not a grateful place, and I mm-hmm. think the arts are eating that. You know, they're not grateful for the fact that you showed up and practiced for thirty years or twenty years or five minutes, and you showed mm-hmm. up and you packed your stuff and you showed up with your band and you made the. It's like they, they of course you're here. You're just another bunch of. And and we're doing you a favor, letting you play on our stage. They have an attitude mm-hmm. about it, mm-hmm. and and uh, I experienced the opposite in in Mexico and in Latin America in October. The opposite, and when I hit up Mexico this uh, winter for shows this coming up, I was going to play. I was looking for like ten shows, and I got two because I wasn't booking a band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they all right. think an acoustic guy is going to be a boring show. Sure, you know? yeah. And so I only got two shows out of like ten. And the place in Guadal, I'm playing in uh, Monterey in Guadalajara. And Guadalajara got back to me, and the, one of the first things out of their email, and their email was like, um, the opposite, anything you never hear in the U.S. Nothing, you never heard anything like this in the U.S. They're like, uh, in, Mex- in Spanish, of course, they're like, uh, um, oh, we're really honored that you re- would reach out to us. The 18th works really well. Um, we'll fi- can you fi- do you want to find another band? How can, you know, and they're working with me. Mm-hmm. And they said to me, and they're not saying they're honored because I'm David Bowie, and oh, finally David Bowie, David Bowie wants to play at my bar. It wasn't that in that sense it's just because they were like oh you want to play at our bar that would be great let's like last night was a was was a mutual mm-hmm. we were you know these people and y'all were grateful to have me and i was mutually grateful if not more to ha- to be had and right to be, sure to be paid attention to and he, whereas if you play if you you know if you, you know, if you don't sell as much many tickets as the karaoke guy mm-hmm. uh here they, they they really think they're doing you a favor and it's not like they're not yeah, giving you a gig is a that's. I mean, they're not, doing it for cool. sure. I mean, it's not, but it's a risk on their part. It is, but they really do think that they're all that. And they're really like, oh well, you know, you're playing at the world famous what? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, what another concrete room that sells mm-hmm. alcohol? Yeah. Gee, oh, another one. You know, What's the most <laughs> second most common building on the face of the planet is a room that sells alcohol. The first mm-hmm. most common being places that people spend the night. And you're going to try to tell me that your big important scene full of people who would stab me in the back for a bag of chips is going to help me out by giving me a free gig for exposure. Adios, mm-hmm. muchachos, I'm out of here, you know. Whereas in Guadalajara, they were like, you know, we're honored that you would reach out to us. And the date happened to work. And sure, well, let's book the show. And they're working with me. And they even offered, I was considering not bringing my guitar because I, I've decided to these uh, Monterey couldn't come up with one, so I said, "Well, I wanted to bring it anyway because I might write in hotels and parks and town squares. I don't know." Sure. And uh, they're like, "Yeah, we'll find a guitar for you. That won't be a problem, you know." And uh, you know, they were even going to find a guitar for me. You one know? of those real big ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, dude, I got a, I got an apartment. Uh, I found an uh, apartment on Garibaldi Square in Mexico City. I don't have a gig there this time. Uh, that's right on Garibaldi Square, which is where all the apparently where all the mariachi guys hang out. Okay, so, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> that is cool, right? Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, I don't know where the, the windows might look into the garbage bin. I don't know, but but, but like, uh, but the but the apartment is located on the mariachi square, so that'll be fun. Every day I go out and get coffee, and there'll be a bunch of I love. I want to. I would love. I would be fun. I, I would dream. It's kind of corny, and Calexico has done it, and I love mm-hmm. Calexico, but you know, but to have like that. To lead a mariachi band in full regalia, it, I, it, I'm never going to do it. It's right, but it would be cool. It's, it's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, you know, at least sprinkle the influence in there. Mm-hmm. Meet some Mexican musicians and 
That's also the grass is greener. They may be telling you, man, this uniform is hot. And, I don't uh, want to wear the uniform. Oh, no, okay. I'm wearing my clothes. Okay. I'm not wearing that crazy polyester thing with... Yeah, with the ruffles yeah, and the yeah, everything. Yeah, probably an inch thick and, you know... And the 10-pound yeah. hat. Yeah, because I think that would be terrible. Yeah. When the strings are like telephone cables right. on that giant weird base thing. Yeah. So when are you going down there? Like in a couple of days or a couple of weeks? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going down to Austin tomorrow to see a buddy and then... Uh, and then Mexico, and then Monterey. The show is on Thursday, and I didn't. I was looking for like three, or four shows a week for all month of May, and uh, it just didn't pan out. So, what do you think? Whenever you get down there, you'll be able to find some. I'm, I might. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna yeah. kind of look around and see what hits me. Uh, see where God, the magnets, all of it points. See where I'm led. See what attracts me. What pulls me away. Uh, what or pulls pulls me toward it. Uh, have the potential. I'm not. We'll see what happens. Um, I found a school that they're looking for English teachers in Mexico City. That might be something I'm you know, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You know, I'm all, I'm not like closed to the idea of working a job. Right. When I'm up in Chicago, I'm like looking for job stack and groceries and at three o'clock in the morning. They don't give it to me because my resume is ridiculous at this point. I'm applying for the job. You know, I I'll, I actually looked at trucking school a couple of years ago and I thought about it and I just I went to a few meetings and decided not to do it just because I didn't feel like I had the time. Uh, but I was—I've uh, been a cool job for me. Yeah, uh, you or like working at the UP, UPS wouldn't hire me because I worked at UPS 18 years ago and and didn't they didn't like uh, we didn't agree we had a so you got stuck on your so I, it's on my it, it's UPS in your file or whatever forever. <laughs> like the guy was Permanent cool record. had a good interview and the guy's like oh according to your file uh, we had a, you guys had a disagreement with us in 2000 and. Or 1999 or some freaking thing, you know? And I'm like, You're like, dude, that was a century ago. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like, really? It's on your record? I mean, I remember that, but I don't remember it at all. Didn't Y2K like, happen? Was, and wipe that out? He's like, we well, we can't hire you. The machine won't let me hire you. <laughs> and my and my resume is ridiculous, dude. It's like, uh, it's no longer. You can't lie about it. You can't fatten it up and say, well, I'll just add a couple months to that job and a couple of, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I was a cab driver for two years, was a movie extra for a while, did all a million different phone jobs, a million different warehouse jobs, a few office temp type jobs, all different kinds of jobs, all kinds of, lots of cash work, which is unmeasurable. Un- right. Somebody hires you to cut down their trees for a week, that kind of stuff for cash. That's the best stuff to do anyway. Yeah. But then you, well, then you look at, it's not like, it's like vast expanses of nothing with like occasional moments of serious employment so what i say and it's true i'm a professional self-employed entertainer and oh but i worked for austin cab for two years from here and there to there and i moved was a movie extra and i worked at that hotel and i wrote freelance for that web developer in 97 and i was on the worked at the marine i was the manager of the gas dock at the marina in gainesville georgia and you know and I, which i was and mm-hmm. you know and just but it's not like at forty five, it's right. ridiculous. They're right. Like, you, know, you obviously you're either you either who you are by now or you're out of your mind. Exactly. I mean, you know, if you don't know who you are, you're you're crazy. You know, so it's like, you know, so yeah, you know, this guy doesn't want to work here because he would have worked here already. He, like, right. his, his resume is a joke, so they don't hire me anymore. Yeah. But I try. Because you know No, you have to do those living. you gotta do those cash gigs or like <laughs> those waiting table gigs or bartender bar whatever those kind of dishwashing yeah those type I'm, of yeah, service jobs I'm not front of house is tough for me man we we're talking about oh the front of the house is, is tough for you it's it is that's why yeah i don't yeah it's that's hard man i i i, I, I as a cabbie i i appreciate t- people that work for a living for tips mm-hmm. live on tips mm-hmm. so i always try to tip waitresses and waiters and people like that as well as possible and at least av- at least a little above average if possible um Cause that's a hard job, dude. I, I uh, the front of house is tough. See, I always like this. I like I, never... I just watch. Just I'll, I'll stand there in my ugly pants and wash dishes. Yeah, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's not fun, but at least I don't. I can, at least I don't have to be in a good mood. I'm not good at faking my mood. It's, it's cry me a river, right? But, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Now what you gotta go. You, you gotta be that way. Hey, how's it going? Like, you're, yeah. you're, you're, like, but you can't. Time. Like a cabbie, you had to. do You didn't have to. That's what I like about being a cabbie is that you don't have to be cool. So. Just like, where do you want to go? Here I want to go. Yeah, okay. if you, want, you yeah. can be rude if you want. You know, you don't have to be. It's almost expected, I think. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Yeah, always agree. had that. Yeah. Yeah, which, yeah. So, um, so will you be doing some writing when you're on your trip? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. we got a project from the songwriting uh, circle uh, to write a song, an Arthurian epic about uh, sword. Uh, 
uh, I, I have I'm always have I actually took I have always have about half a dozen songs in progress at any given time and so I brought I'm bringing my um, all my scraps unwritten sl- pieces of music which is like two pieces of notebook paper mm-hmm. here's some chord changes that I've never done anything with and uh, if it turns into a song it will if not I'll you know I'll just eat some street tacos and and watch some ASMR videos and pass out in a hotel somewhere. Yeah, and I just found out what that was. Yeah. ASMR. <laughs> I, just, I didn't know yeah, what that was until a few days those ago. Whisper chicks, I call them. Yeah. I don't do the dudes. So I can't but that helps you sleep and stuff? You like it? I do. It relaxes you? Because, I, I mean, some people lot. say that they have anxiety and it really will calm down their anxiety. I've yeah. never tried it, but it's a real thing. Some of them are weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. It's got to be actually kind of relaxing. You can't be like, you know... Some of them are not talented. Yeah, no, I think mm-hmm. ASMR Gibby is the big one. And she whispers all the time. And, she'll, yeah, and she just talks about her regular thing. Like if she did this podcast, she would just do it like this. But yeah, I know. It's weird, she's just, actually. Mm-hmm. She's not telling you a story. She's just talking about this week I went to the grocery store and did this, this, whatever. She's just talking yeah, about she's herself. She's talking and, quietly. It's really, whisper. really quiet. I like the Russian accents. Yeah. And the uh, Scottish. How weird. Alert. I just never knew this. The YouTube blows Some my mind every day. The Russian is or speaking English. It's, it's relaxing. Mm-hmm. You know. And it, you know, it's, it's, I people, like the clean ones. Too much innuendo is, is distracting. Oh, is there some like naughty? Some, ones well, not, not naughty, not but like this kind of gives you. But you know, right? A little bit of. B- but girls are trying to be a little flirty to make. I don't like. Perhaps that. they get more views yeah, or something. Really, I guess that's what they do. Yeah, and yeah, they do. They can make a living. Those chicks make bank, dude. Of course, they make a serious money. They do. I mean, I don't know, thousands of dollars a month they make off of that. Good for them. I need to figure out a way to do it, man. <laughs> so we've got microphones, Jeff. Before we, we're not yeah. making any money off of this. No, I but know, we, we're not doing we're ASMR all, either. Uh, uh, Donating uh, everything, blood, time. No, I always found out about this stuff too late. We need to be on the forefront. Oh, <laughs> the bleeding we, edge. We need to think about ASMR stuff a long time ago. Once, once I find out about it, it's already too late to jump in on top of it because I'm yeah. way mm-hmm. late to all that stuff. But if you have a natural voice for it, you might, know, you know, you can throw your head. In the some ring. people like stutterers. I could start stuttering and I have like a stuttering YouTube channel. You could probably do it. Use some pretty mellow voice. Mm-hmm. I don't like to judge dudes whispering voices. <laughs> 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 I'm going to do a whole... Oh, I'm, freaking me out. I'm going to do a whole video just oh, for Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, I know you're in Mexico, Nathan. All right, I'm out. Y'all. I'm thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm done. <laughs> um, now, I do want to ask Denver before we go, though. So, one, how did you find out about... Nathan Payne. I mean, like, where did you hear his first song and get into his music and whatever, whatever, whatever? And then, what made you think to act, to reach out and ask him to come out here and do this? And how did all that work? And were you like excited when it happened? You know what I mean? That. Um, yeah. So I'm. We. I saw Nathan's show in Austin. I'm guessing 08, uh, 09 maybe, and uh, I was really taken by it. Went up to talk to him. Uh, he was super energetic. Bought a couple CDs. I felt like he took a lot of time to talk to me and what's now my kid's mother. Uh, so she was there. We both dug it. Uh, I listened to those CDs for a couple of years and then the internet, uh, you know, became more and more part of daily life. And I was like, you know, it'd been a couple of years. And I was like, man, I got to look that dude up. So then I listened to it by myself for years. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I don't know if I hit him up to say that like a lot of his stuff wasn't available on Bandcamp. That's what it was. I was like, oh, well, there was only a couple of records, I think, up there. And I was like, hey, dude, uh, can you put all that stuff up or something? Uh, because I've been jamming you forever. Uh, and it's like it really – and watching what Nathan was doing, like we hadn't been talking, but I was like – I was watching it and I was like, I want to do it like that. I want to be this consistent. I want to, you know, I want to go this hard, you know, Uh so then we, he's like, oh yeah, whatever. And uh, then what happened? A few more conversations. And I was like, hey, uh, can, I was like, Neil, let's go up to Chicago and interview him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so me and Neil were like, yeah. Let's, and he was like, yeah. And then he was like, well, uh, maybe better not. You know what I mean? Uh, and then I was looking, it's like, okay, he's going to Mexico. It's like, well, hey, uh, we were going to try to get him to open up for Chilamunda or something. And it's like, oh, that wasn't the best fit. And then, then it was like I was talking to Neil. I was like, "Fuck!" Or I was like, "You know, how do we do this, man?" And Neil was like, uh, "Me and Neil started brainstorming, and it's like private show. You know, let's earn enough money to make it worth time. You know, worth the- worth the time to come here and do yeah, it." Cause yeah, because initially we we're like, "Man, you, I thought you'd be driving your van." I was like, "Oh, yeah, we could probably get a hundred bucks or something at least. You know, if you come play, we we're thinking about doing it mass or something." Stuff, yeah. But it didn't work out. Didn't work out. And then it was like, "This is a good idea." And uh, and then I was, we were like, we can do this, you know. And then uh, 
So then it has been really cool. Like uh, just even this whole weekend going through the process of it, getting to hang out uh, Mm -hmm. because in a lot of ways I've been, it's been like not my secret. I've shared it with everybody. I've been playing California Hills, you know, that first song we listened to. And like when I'm playing a show, if I'm like hating the experience of being there because it's everyone's eating food, uh, you know, I'll play that song room will light up it's like guaranteed i can like turn a room you know that's a great song man it really mm-hmm. is that's but then i stopped yeah. then i stopped playing it because everyone is coming up being like dude my, my your favorite my favorite song of yours is california Heroes. <laughs> right. it's like, i mean i want them to enjoy it i wanted to share that music i wanted them to check out nathan but uh all at the same time i want to be known for what your i songs. do yeah uh, and i don't mind playing it with people that already like my it's like or, oh or, well that's know, not whatever. your song i like blood machines a whole lot you're like yeah, yeah, blood, yeah blood I know. Machine's my favorite yeah, song. I, i'm really good at uh <laughs> Cover i people. think i'm really good at finding people about i think i have a good ear and uh, you do have a good ear i mm-hmm. think i'm good at then uh what internalizing that and uh re-expressing things that i think are like really awesome uh so yeah then i think yeah, it was, it was a really neat event, school. you know. It was just yeah, it was I was, great. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know how y'all met and stuff, you know. It was a high honor, really, actually, because you don't take that stuff for granted. You yeah, know? I can't remember the girl that was sitting next to me. She's at all the shows. Camille? She's super cute. Is that her name, Camille? I don't know anybody's name. I just uh, met everybody. You know what I'm talking about? Well, she, I don't remember who was sitting next to you. Maybe she's at, she's at all your shows. She's at all your shows. She's really cute. She's short. Short, but that's Camille. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Camille. Yeah. yeah, she had the long dress on last night. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, she's in the theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. She was cool. Yeah, she's awesome. You know, I don't, I don't know her that well, but I, quite a bit. I started she seeing her over the past four or five shows. Great. Just like at every show that mm-hmm. I go to, it's like there she is. But anyways, I was sitting. We were rocking buddies. She was in a rocking chair, and I was in a rocking chair, uh, and she was singing like half of your songs. And I was like, this is so cool. Because then I and I asked her, I go, how long have, have you listened to him? She's like, oh, maybe a couple of months. She's like, Denver turn tur- 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 me on to so him. You know, amazing. I was like, that's so it's cool really that amazing. you know. It's like great. Legitimize, it legitimizes you. Yeah, because she even asked you to play a song. You're like, oh, I haven't played that song in years. And you kind of halfway remembered it and played a verse for it. And then, yeah. like, that's all I got. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, it's cool. I think yeah, that's it's neat. Nice. It is. Yeah. Nice. Nothing in the world is worse than playing for people who are eating. Oh. <laughs> I can't stand it, man. That's a tough gig. Playing for people who are eating. I'd, I'd rather play in the bus station. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> tough, dude. Yeah. Restaurant shows are hard. That's a totally inattentive audience. Yeah, that's a rough room, especially when the place is kind of half and half and kind of has a, a PA and a mic stand and they even clear some tables and it's kind of like you're not just sitting in the corner playing acoustic, you know, instrumental music for their, which would be a, a job and a, a legitimate way to or make maybe like money. a little jazz guitar or something. They want you to play your set. Right. Mm-hmm. But everybody, everybody in front of you is, is sitting at dinner with their family or with their wife or their husband or their kids and it's like, it's a tough, that's the toughest crowd. Anyway, you start singing it to was them. a great honor, man. Yeah, hey, you, it. eating your steak. Well, I think you dropped a piece of steak on the I floor, know, right? man. You should pick it up. The, the sun, you know, my junky f- girlfriend is strung out on heroin with a bunch of people who are eating a cheeseburger <laughs> with their five-year-old. I mean, Mom, it's, what's it's heroin? Yeah. Yeah, right? What's strung out? You know, even if you don't, you know, even the sun, you know, it's, you, or, you know, kiss my tits, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that. You just, you probably wouldn't, I wouldn't sing it in that. No, you wouldn't do that, yeah. But, yeah, it's, but that's what's hard about it. It's that you kind of have to, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I, I think the la- it's been a theme of the last few times, especially I've done a podcast or something where I've, I've talked mess about that. Really, I see there's some work that I should probably do. I mean, I can make that more entertaining for myself and challenge myself, and I'm grateful for the whatever, 100 to 300 bucks, you know. But, you know, the place, the weird thing is the places they don't really seem like they need the music that everyone's just competing to have it you know uh so i will right. take the money you sure. know but it's like y'all don't no one really wants me here and so it's yeah. like it's really a job it's and i'll do it but you know it's it just doesn't make sense you mm-hmm. know yeah, and i've seen joe savage play at, at like whatever burger place that was and i've seen vincent play at burger place and no but i've seen uh the burnett's play at at, at shaw's mm-hmm. a few times um 
because anytime I see like one of my favorite people playing at a place, I'm like, hey, you want to go out to eat tonight? Denver's playing at the at the pizza parlor. Mm-hmm. Let's go have pizza. You know, so we'll come out there because I think it's kind of cool. That'd be cool if it was you know? funny, but yeah, yeah, it, it, but it, yeah, it, but it, but most of those people there are just eating pizza, and they're like, why mm-hmm. is this guy singing to me while I'm eating pizza? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm you like, go up to him like the like the Mexican mariachi. Yeah, walk around the table to table and start singing. Just oh yeah, serenading oh, each table. That, now that's, that sounds like a rough gig. That would be a rough gig. I don't want you. You know, we're yeah. trying to talk, man. Get the fuck away from me. You know. <laughs> Rude. They throw yeah. money at you. Got you just bothering them so that they throw money at you to leave them alone. Not quite the same as playing music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Use exactly. music as a hammer. Mm-hmm. Bludgeon money out of the. People. If you tip me, I'll leave. If you don't tip me, I'm here and I'm getting louder. You know. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So no, man. I really hope you get to come back through. And I will. Maybe play live. Maybe get. Yeah. With Joe and put some stuff on on tape. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Just, no, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. consider it done. Yeah. I mean, you're in One Horn Studio. He's he's an engineer. No, this he is, can, I've been he can really make records. Super honored and grateful. You know, it's not overstated. It's true, but it's also I'm in, the risk of sounding high minded or whatever. I mean, it, it, I'm impressed with everybody and everything that I've met because I was kind of half expecting. Well, I didn't have to expect anything. You know what? But I wouldn't yeah. have been surprised and was totally prepared. I wasn't bracing for it, but like a bunch of wasteoids and a beer soaked couches and and uh smoking weed I, I don't mind i like smoking weed but like people still do the weed for eight hours yeah. and then yeah oh maybe we should you know and then they think you know they're not these people are all y'all are serious people that are mm-hmm. you know you might have a beer here and there and stuff like that but it's like you know it's not like your main drive in life and mm-hmm. and uh uh, that's part of the reason i'm you know i don't i'm not interested in that kind of thing yeah so, no. I, I'm, I this has been a I'm a cheerleader I'm for this. I'm grateful. I'm I'm very grateful. Well, I'm a I'm a cheerleader for the scene, so I sometimes wear the rose colored glasses, and I don't see all the ugliness that actually happens in the scene. But mm-hmm. I Good. think, but I think that yeah, one, but I, to see. but I think that this is, I, I think there's something special going on in the city. I think yeah. that the people here are a little more well, serious. That venue, but that was I was blown away by how nice that venue was last night that Neil's band was playing in. I mean. It's just where uh, where they play? oh they went to the brewery where they go Dimitri New Main New, New Main oh which has yeah a nice room we need to throw a show there yeah uh, Mean Motor Scooter Chill Mundo we or do all of us oh, anything yeah, like yeah. let's do it yeah. yeah great venue no I think you'd do good here man yeah. I think you'd have a lot of fun I think you should come and stay for like six months or a year li- live in your van hell I think Luke lives in his RV part of the time I think. Yeah, yeah he's got six beds in there yeah. I sold my van for <laughs> airplane tickets though yeah yeah it was kind of sad but it had to be done so my friend it was like you know. We live together. <laughs> there's a lot of lakes around here. You you can pitch a tent. I'll come out and I'll go oh, fishing with you. There's oh. other there's other vans. The world is full. There well, there. There's yeah. no shortage of uh, vans, cars, vans. station yeah. wagons. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that we will. We'll do it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll close out the song. You you did this last last night. It was True Love Is a Trip, and I yeah. just liked it. You know. Yeah, I love this. This is a. I think this is a good song. This is one of my favorite new ones of mine to play. And I like to end kind of one a little slower. This isn't really slow, but it's a little bit right, more yeah. chill well, than than the other two we played. Countryish. Yeah, uh, it's not country, obviously, but it's got that for me. It's country in my world. Yeah, in my mm-hmm. in my discography, it's country. It's more closer to country than the other a lot of other stuff. Yeah, it's not country. But it's got that. It uh, has that feel for sure. It's got that vibe. It totally does. But I love this. So, song, yeah. I like it. And they can find you on Bandcamp. Is it under Nathan? Um, no, ba- yeah, Nathan, Nathan Payne. Dot Bandcamp, or you can go to PabloSmogLives. Dot com. That's my website, and uh, that's where all the info is. But Nathan Payne. Dot Bandcamp. Dot com uh, is where you can get the greatest hits albums are for free. I don't know a PayPal customer, so nothing can be paid for. Uh, the greatest tips albums are just a primer for anybody who doesn't have anything, and that's a good place to start. And you can take them for free, and you can't pay for them. So NathanPayne.BandCamp.com or PabloSmogLives.com. Yeah, and these three songs I pulled off the off the free ones that you can get online. So just so they're people all know, three, all three are on different. There's four greatest hits albums, and they're all three available on some. One form of the other, yeah. of them or another. So if you like these, you can get these for free. But it also, it's a good link. You can see the. Of the other ones, and if you're interested, yeah, you can listen to all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And if you're interested in something, it's, you know, you can email him right from yes, right from at there. PabloSmogLives.com is a contact page. And so it's cool. I was telling them, it's like I've been driving. I just played the sideburns in the snow. Is that, is that the greatest? Yeah, season? volume. Yeah, sideburns yeah. in the sun, sideburns in the snow. So I just hit, I just hit play, and I was driving around listening to it, and I was like, man, I don't hear a song I don't like. I mean, the really, it's just I like them. I, right on. I, the the lyrical content, Thanks, man. the just the melody and the way it goes. I, th- I think you're a really, Thank the you. really interesting you know songwriter it seems that these days people have kind of gotten lazy 
with some of their lyrics. Oh, for Not sure. Not people that we know. Like, I think Sammy's really good. I think Richard's really good. Um, Denver's obviously, you know, I mean, we have a lot of really good people here in town, but I mean, on the big top 40 scale or whatever, it's like, what a, Whatever's coming out on the radio is bullshit. I don't even like, hear people finishing whole lines anymore. Right? It's, just like, it's just a couple syllables that sometimes, might, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like the whole song is—it's not even a tune. It's like a collection of Noises. sound frequencies <laughs> in a four-minute wave file, and now mm-hmm. it, and and then it's just like—is that even? It's kind of hard to tell sometimes yeah. what's. But yours is colorful. It's you, yeah. a poetic, it's, and it's yeah. you know it's kind of kind of like a dolly painting at times you're just like it's kind of weird right it's real and stuff and it's like i, re- I really like it Cheers. you know enjoy it's, it man. it's been a lot of fun take, take it, yeah take the free links and i'll give you some codes yeah and you can take some all y'all no they're awesome and so i want everybody to you know if you haven't already then check out nathan Payne. and uh i don't know anything else we need to thank you promote no. or anything all right cool. thank you i guess that's it man right. we'll see everybody next week no, right. and we're going to listen to true love is a trip which true love true love is a trip is a trip <laughs> so true words haven't been said bye everybody bye goodbye the setting sun But I'll be damned if we didn't try All our ships set sail Pull in the sky And the stars are framed by fire and hair Our footsteps slowly slip True love is a trip sky of golden coins and diamond rings Hold me in your heart We can stop anytime we like We just don't know where to start But I'll be a damned if we did Well, our ship set sail Pull in the sky Pull in the stars are framed by fire and hair And our hands are in the air As our footsteps slowly slip True love is a trip Cause love is hell and trust is hard I let everything down a little
except my garden. Let's throw our baggage over and board and uh, take a stand. Hold the horror lightly in your hand and sweep me away with the sway of your hips. True love is a trip.